pensions to most people is quite an alien topic. No one really knows how it works. And even for some, they consider it to be a topic that should be left later on down in life when we're closer to retirement age. But this could not be further from the truth. In actual fact, you'll be doing yourself a great favor if you start your pension planning as soon as possible. There is a lot of content to go through, so without further ado, let's get on with the show. So first and foremost, let's understand really what a pension actually is. A pension is essentially a tax efficient way to save money to fund your lifestyle when you reach retirement. There are three types of pensions that we should all know. The first one being the state pension. This is when we get contributions from the government alone. The second being the private pension. This is where you get contributions from yourself and also from the government in the form of tax relief. And third and finally is the workplace pension. This gets contribution from yourself, the government, but also your employer. There are actually two types of workplace pensions available. One being the defined contributions, which we'll be focusing in this video. The other type is known as defined benefits and this is when your pension is defined by your salary and for how long you've worked for that employer in question. However, defined benefits is considered to be the old way of doing pensions and they are really hard to come by. So for the majority of us, it's likely that we're going to have the defined contribution scheme, which is why I've decided to focus on this one in particular. In short, would I encourage you to contribute to your workplace pension? Yes. Absolutely. If you are someone that is thinking about opting out of their pension scheme, I really want you to think about it carefully. I'm hoping in this video, I'll touch upon all the points for you to make a really clear cut decision. Once again, I'm not a financial advisor. This video is only meant for information and educational purposes. If you do require financial advice, please do seek out a professional. So let's first look at the pros when it comes to getting a workplace pension. One of the main benefits of the workplace pension is that your employer will also contribute to your pension pot as well. Now, the way they do this varies between company and company, so please do check with your employer on how they contribute to your pension pot. You should have some sort of employee handbook which should have the details of this, or in doubt, just speak with HR or payroll and they should be able to assist you. The most common scheme that employers tend to do is that they will match your contributions. For example, if I put in 5% of my monthly salary within my pension pot, my employer would also do the same, they'll put in 5%. If I chose to do 8%, my employer would also put in 8% for that month as well. Usually your employer contributions do tend to have a limit, so in this example they may only match up to 10%, for example, so if I put in 11%, they'll just stick with 10% still. But I would really encourage you to set up your pension to make sure that you are getting the most amount of money possible from your employer because it is essentially free money that otherwise you wouldn't be able to have access to. Think of it as almost a pay rise, but you don't really get to see the rewards of that pay rise until you hit retirement age. The second benefit is that once you do hit retirement age, you don't have to rely on the state pension to fund for your retirement. The latest state pension age for men and women is 68 years old. But however, this has already changed multiple times within the last decade. So when I get to that age, I doubt it's gonna be 68. It's most likely gonna be a little bit higher. And with the full state pension being at 134 pounds per month, which means you're roughly getting an income of 537 pounds per month, this is unlikely to sustain your current lifestyle. Which is especially worrying, particularly as there was a stat released from Hargreaves Langsdown, can't say that name, <laughs> Hargreaves Langsdown, that one in six people are unlikely to pay off their mortgage by the time they turn 65. Now this is a really scary thing that I think all of us will obviously be wanting to avoid, particularly when you consider that paying your mortgage is probably going to be your biggest outgoing every month because we all like to think that once we hit the ripe old age of retirement even though yeah we might not be earning as much while we were working but at least I don't have a mortgage to pay off and you know that alleviates some of the downsides of having a smaller income but considering that there is an increasing population of retirees that still have to pay off their mortgage we really need to make sure that we have enough money to fund our lifestyle so I would rather instead think of your state pension if it's still around by the time you retire but that's a whole nother topic that we'll get into another day as a supplement to your workplace pension, which you can currently access when you reach the age of 55. This will be changing to 57 in 2028. And by taking action now, you can ensure that your pension fund will be set up so that you can fund the type of lifestyle that you would like to see when you reach that age. Just a quick note that anyone is eligible for state pension. You just have to have paid national insurance for 30 years. 
The next benefit is that you also get tax relief or what I would consider government top ups when you contribute to your pension pot now. Now the tax relief will work in either of the following two ways. The first way being something known as relief at source. Now this is when your employer takes your contributions to your pension after you've paid tax. Now taxes obviously include things like income tax, national insurance tax and student finance if you have any. Then it is the pension provider who then claims the tax relief from the government. If you are a basic rate taxpayer, you get 20% of government tax relief. This means that if I wanted to contribute £100 to my pension pot, I'm actually only paying £80 of my own money in there, with the other £20 being funded by the government. For higher rate earners, you actually get 40% in tax relief. So again, if I put in £100, £60 of it would be my own money and £40 would be coming from the government. However, one small difference, whereas for the basic rate holder, it is the pension provider that claims the tax relief from the government on their end. If you are a high rate earner or additional rate earner, you actually have to do this yourself via your tax returns. So that was relief at source. That's one way of getting tax relief. The other way, something known as net pay arrangement. This is when your employer takes your contributions before tax or on your gross pay. And whatever is left over from your contribution is what you'll then pay tax on. So this automatically means that you get tax relief. And I'll explain this with an example. Let's say I earn a salary of £40,000 per year, which equals £333 per month gross, so before tax. If I didn't contribute to my pension, I would pay £763.33 in taxes, which means that my take home pay is £2,570 per month. Now sticking with the same example, but this time I choose to contribute 7% to my pension pot and 7% equals 196 pounds and 93 pence per month. And because I do that, my taxable income is now lower. Therefore, I'm only paying 723 pounds and 95 pence in taxes for that month, which is less than the previous scenario. And that means my take home pay is now 2,412 and 45 pence. So even though I contributed 196 pounds to my pension pot, I only lost just over 157 pounds in my take home pay. And that is all to do with the fact that under this net pay arrangement, your employer takes your contributions before tax, so you are left with less taxable income, which means you end up paying less tax. Your company's pension will adopt either one of these two schemes, so it'll be really useful for you to find out which one they're using. And you can easily find this out if you contact your HR department. department. In general, for those that don't pay income tax or are a basic rate tax holder, the relief at source tends to be more beneficial towards you. And the opposite tends to be true for anyone that is a higher income earner or an additional rate income earner. The net pay arrangement scheme will work out better for you. So the next benefit is that you do have some control over how much money will be left in your pension pot and thus ensure that your lifestyle that you want is gonna be funded for. So figuring out how much money you need in your pension pot is a tricky one and you're not gonna get it right on the money. But if you want to have a really good estimate, what you'll need to do is sit down and really think about what your likely outgoings will be when you hit retirement age. Now this is all dependent on your lifestyle choices. For example, how many holidays do you want to go on? What kind of entertainment would you like to do every month? Do you see yourself paying for your grandchildren's university fees, for example? I don't know. You really do have to take that all into account and that way you should get a decent estimate of how much money you will need to fund that type of lifestyle. However, for something quick and easy to get you started, a good rule of thumb is to take your average salary, let's say for example, 30,000 pounds, you want to aim for your pension pot to be 10 times that amount. So in this example, my pension pot should be 30,000 times 10, which is 300,000 pounds. There is a really useful pension calculator, which I'll put a link in the description box down below. This is from Money Advice Services. They take into account how big your pension pot is currently, how much you're contributing every month, and also how much your employer is also contributing and what your target amount for your pension pot should be. And this will tell you how likely or how unlikely you are to hit that target. The next benefit is that once you do hit that retirement age, you do have some flexibility on how you withdraw the money. Before I go any further, it's important to note that 25% of your entire private pension pot can be taken out tax-free as a lump sum. And for the remaining 75%, you're likely going to pay tax on this, but how much tax really depends on how you choose to withdraw your pension. So the options available to take out the rest of your pension pot is A, taking all of it or some of it out as cash. 
Now remember, you will be charged tax on this, and this will be in line with whatever the income tax is at that point in time. The next option that we have available to us is that we can use our pension pot to buy something called an annuity, and this basically guarantees you income for the rest of your life. So sticking with the same example that I have 300K in my pension pot, I did a really generic calculation to find out what my annuity rate will be. I did this by using an annuity calculator provided by Aviva, link in the description box down below. So obviously this is based on a number of assumptions, so it's not gonna give us the most accurate review, but it's a good indication of how much your pension pot will get you in terms of annuity rates. So in this example, a 300K pension pot gave me a lifetime income of just under 10,000 pounds per year, which was roughly around about 820 pounds per month. The third and final option is that you can withdraw a proportion of your pension while keeping the remaining proportion invested in a fund of some sort. Now, not many people know this, but when you're contributing to your private pension, that money isn't actually being held in a bank account somewhere in cash. The pension provider is actually investing that money for you with the hopes to get a better return for you in the future. So one thing that you can do is just withdraw a small portion of the pension pot, which will be, I guess, your income for maybe six months or, or one year, and you leave the remaining amount in that pension pot working for you by investing into the market. And hopefully when you revisit your pension to claim on your next income, you would have seen that your pension pot has actually grown in value because there has been a good return on investment by simply keeping some of the money still working in the market and earning you that extra money. Now, the final point that I want to make, and this isn't really a, a positive, it's just more of a useful tip, is that we really want to be starting our pension pot as soon as possible. Because your workplace pension is an investment, time becomes your biggest ally in terms of growing out that pension pot to a sizable amount. Check out one of my earlier videos when I described the miracle that is compound interest, where I demonstrate that if you hold your investments for a really long time, you're likely to see an exponential growth in your return on investment. And what better long-term investment than your pension fund? Now moving on to the cons. Now this is probably going to be the biggest disadvantage when getting a workplace pension, and that is the fact that any money that you contribute to your pension pot, you will not be able to get access to until you reach the retirement age. And obviously life has no guarantee, so we'll never really know what financial situations we'll find ourselves in the future, and having that money locked away from us could be of major disadvantage to our financial situation and can cause us some major distress. Now you can't deny that a workplace pension has some huge positive implications for our financial future, but I accept that this is quite a serious disadvantage too, and this is probably the main reason why it leads some people to decide to opt out from the workplace pension. So for me, when it comes down to deciding how much money I put into my pension pot, it comes down to a certain amount of balance. Because even though there is of course no way of guaranteeing what financial bumps we'll find ourselves in the future, but that to me doesn't mean that we should not consider about saving for our future as well. Personally, for my pension, I ensure that I set it up to get the most out of my employer's contribution as it is free money. And for me, that is too high of an advantage to just give up by not considering the pension scheme option. As things currently stand, I could afford to contribute more to my pension, but I choose not to. So what I do with the rest of the money is that I choose instead to put it in an investment ISA, which has far less restrictions when it comes to accessing the money, and it also has its tax benefits too, in the sense that any earnings that I make within an ISA account are tax-free. But overall, that was the approach that I took when deciding how much money I should contribute to my pension fund. I struck a balance between the positives and the cons of having a workplace pension. Another thing that is worth noting is that you do get some relief if you become ill of health. The relief can come in the forms of being able to take out your money before the retirement age, do check with your provider on how this works. And with the other type of relief is that you may be able to withdraw the entire pension pot as a tax-free lump sum as well. The next con is that as with any investment, there is always an element of risk and pensions are no different. There is of course no guarantee that your investments will perform well in the market and there is a chance that the value of your pension pot at the end will be less than the contributions made towards it. However, one way to try and combat this or alleviate some of the risk is to find out and understand what you're actually investing. I found out that my pension was actually investing in low risk funds, which might work for some people, but, but it wasn't generating as much return as I would like to see. But I chose to swap it for a more high risk investment because I do have longevity on my side and I do have confidence in the investment that I did end up choosing will generate me a higher return in the long term. 
So, so yeah, try and find out what your pension is actually investing in. You can easily do this by contacting your pension provider. And if you find that the investment that they have chosen for you is slightly on the more high risk scale, you can think about maybe switching it to one of their more low risk products and vice versa. And now the final con, and again, I'm not really sure if this is really a con, more of just another tip, but as you are automatically opted in to your private pension fund, you will have to jump through some hoops to opt out. Now this can be a necessary means for those that are struggling with high debt, particularly debt with high amounts of interest, as it makes financial sense to focus on clearing the debt first before contributing or increasing your contributions to your pension scheme. If you want to withdraw temporarily from the scheme in order for you to do this, then speak with your HR department and they should be able to assist you. I should also point out that if you opt out within a month of the auto enrollment, is that if you opt out within the first month of your auto enrollment, you will be entitled to get your entire money back However, if you opt out after one month, any money that is sitting in your pension pot will not be accessed until you reach the relevant age. Of course, so that is Workplace Pensions Explained. That was a lot to go through, so well done for sticking around to the end of this video. Um, I did try my best to break it down as easily as possible because I think one of the bad things is, actually I should have probably put this as a con, is that pensions are probably overly complicated. And even for me, I still have to reread on what the pension rules are because there is so many options and variables to consider. But hopefully this video has given you more than enough information for you to plan effectively for your retirement. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on workplace pensions and let me know if you have any strategy that you've put in place to fund for your future self. And as always, if you really like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. That does wonders for the growth of my channel and I release a video every single Monday. So if you wanna keep up to date with that, please hit the subscribe button. See you later.